So, welcome to the fifth episode of series five of Entangled Discussions, back with a big bang, quantum and space. For those new to the talks, we're a friendly, inclusive group, and we encourage interaction. So please use the chat box for any questions or observations along the way. And for those comfortable taking the mic, there'll be an opportunity to join the conversation and ask questions during the event. Um, these talks are recorded and they go into our Entangled Discussions YouTube channel um, and are also shared on LinkedIn. Um, so we're actually changing the way we administer these talks slightly. So please follow Entangled Positions on LinkedIn to ensure you stay up to date with all future talks and other events and content that we are involved with. Um, so back to today. Um, we welcome back a friend of the show um, whose background spans legal, space, quantum, ethics, governance, and so much more. Um, and when, <clears throat> when not building multinational conglomerates, advising governments, NATO or the UN, um, today's guest likes nothing more than talking about the things we most enjoy here on Entangled Discussions. So for today's talk, Quantum Diplomacy for the New Space Age, it gives me such great pleasure to introduce Malag Trebelsi Loeb. Thank you, thank you, John. Actually, uh, yeah, I, I don't tend to be expert in quantum. I'm far away to be expert. I have esteemed uh, uh, audience over there, and they are very good at what they do. And I don't try to 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 be one of them at all. But actually, what I do is I advise based on uh, my my expertise and my knowledge. Even though uh, most of the time I, I don't like to say expert. Uh, but I had a, a, a very, very nice surprise when I was called by uh, to attend and, and to give uh, expert advice into uh, um, in the workshop lately by NATO in the South Hub in Napoli. And I talked about something um, very close to, uh, to what I'm going to uh, speak about today. And actually some... Um, uh, part of what I'm going to share, it was um, uh, also shared in the uh, expert meeting and uh, in the workshop, I uh, delivered uh, to, uh, to, to the NATO. And actually, the, the, uh, um, the, the, the subject itself is, uh, is not new. When we talk about diplomacy, it's not a new phenomenon. Uh, and, and when we talk about uh, um, uh, uh, national interest is not is not a new phenomenon, but actually what I will do is like uh, with with some um, issues that they are uh, we are witnessing today, and this is how I help um, uh, uh, parties that they are uh, within specific areas, and uh, it touching these areas are touching upon the national interest, and there is a lot of due diligence is. Um, uh, there is a lot of uh, implication for uh, the, the, the the national interest when it comes to quantum, when uh, technology, when it comes to uh, other technologies, for example, uh, AI, machine learning, uh, AI applications, machine learning, uh, robotics, and, uh, and and other fields. And um, uh, please allow me to share my screen and actually uh, my uh, presentation here. It's going to be a very uh, so I, I'm trying to uh, start from the beginning. I have my, yeah. So um, yeah, it, uh, I will have the outlines and speak more about uh, um, uh, about the, the the quantum diplomacy for the new space age. And actually, I will stress on the national interest. That's the topic of today, which is the problems faced by both the public sector and the private sector, most likely because most of the time. Uh, when it, when when it's uh, it's about uh, uh, export uh, of technology or or investment uh, into another uh, um, jurisdiction where there is um, some uh, let's say restrictions uh, or national interest prerogatives, the the, the party who is uh, involved it, it doesn't matter if it's the investor or the company itself they need to make the or they ask for due diligence in order to see the implication for the national interest like that there is no problem of long arm jurisdiction from the country that he belongs to from both sides or uh, like let's say the host country or uh, the, the 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 country of the investor or the the startup or any party who's involved into this uh, 
activity. So um, here I have my UFO just left, and uh, we start with uh, the introduction. So of course I'm not. This is uh, I'm going to say a disclaimer. Like I said before, I'm not a quantum expert, but this is like some of the aspect of of today's presentation is based on my uh, uh, research and uh, and and uh, research about, for example, the historical uh, perspective of uh, uh, quantum technology and the quantum race uh, 2.0. Some people they call it the quantum. Uh, revolution 2.0. There is a difference between both of them. I will I, I will go uh, through the thing. So when we talk about the historical perspective, um, as we are all aware, uh, we are witnessing a quantum revolution, also known as the uh, uh, the quantum revolution 2.0. The essence of this revolution revolves around quantum mechanical phenomena, including entanglement, superposition, and interference. We are also aware that these phenomena, uh, phenomena are at the key of the new paradigm or the heart of the new paradigm for information uh, processing and technological disruption, which is playing critical role in the way uh, we compute, we measure, and we communicate. However, the reliance upon quantum mechanics in various technologies is not new, of course. In fact, for decades, they were deployed under the first quantum revolution or the quantum revolution 1.0, and precisely starting from the beginning of the 20th century with the dawn of quantum mechanics, quantum figures uh, such as like uh, a very uh, well-known quantum figures, such as Niel Bohr, Max Planck, and Albert Einstein were able to reconcile uh, each one in, in, in separate um, fields or, or interconnected fields. So they were able to reconcile the inconsistencies related to classical theories. Um, an entirely new chapter in history was born and the beginning of a new era in human knowledge was witnessed, followed by key mathematical uh, foundations development that marked new quantum theory application to, under, uh, to understand the properties of matter and related and other properties related uh, discoveries and also new questions were raised. So however, after the World War II, the race was scientific and economical with a common objective. The deployment of computers um, disrupted by the development of uh, uh, quantum theory. In fact, the backbone of the next revolution was the transistor, which formed the integrated circuits, the main component of computer or one of them. However, quantum mechanics helped understanding semiconductors and, and uh, ultimately led to the creation of transistors. And for furthermore, let's say it simply, there would be no internet without quantum and the same about mobile phones, video games, uh, and so no social medias, <laughs> actually no headache, I'm just kidding. So uh, quantum 1.0 helped extend classical physics capabilities to help invent digital cameras medical instruments, lasers, and nuclear power uh, uh, plants. So that was the, the, the first, uh, um, the transition for the next quantum race 2.0. So there is one important uh, aspect between the first revolution and uh, uh, the second quantum revolution, the role of entanglement in the revolution uh, or, or, or both of them. In fact, the, 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 the ignited spark uh, announcing the start of the new era is witnessed when quantum physics, uh, physics and information theory were linked. I will not go through into details. I have amazing quantum uh, experts over there and they know best uh, about the Shannon quantum's information mathematical theory. Uh, and uh, uh, Peter Shore, uh, the, when, when was um, working at Bell's lab, discovered the most uh, modern cryptographic encryption uh, schemes, uh, which uh, can be uh, broken efficiently by a machine capable of processing quantum information. So this dramatic illustration of power of quantum computers um, um, or, or the deployment of, of uh, um, information theory to uh, a next height. So quantum information theory had found a potent real uh, world application um, despite the problems the world digital infrastructure, uh, 
infrastructure at that time, infrastructures at that time. So since short discovery, the quantum revolution, uh, uh, the quantum revolution uh, 2.0 has been on and the race was focused on various aspects such as improving precision in control of isolated quantum systems to fix issues related to decoherence. De uh, so novel quantum technologies allow us to overcome the decoherence issue and deploy individual quantum system for information processing. And that's the, 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 what most is about today. And this is the race about uh, today. So, and since quantum technologies have significant impact on the national interest, as it touches every aspect of the state's function. And this is my, my, my actually I'm entering to my thing right now. And I'm, excuse me if I missed anything or I, I, I did not uh, pinpoint something um, that you think it would be uh, a, a more uh, uh, suitable to, to talk about when we speak about the history. But I try to, let's say, uh, present this because I have a lot of audience that when uh, John will share the video, they will, uh, they're not coming from the quantum industry. So uh, please, uh, during the Q&A session, if you want to add something, uh, 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 John or, or any of our experts today in the, in the, in the room here, please let, let me know and you can have the mic to add more. So, um, uh, and, and when we talk about, about the quantum technologies and the significance uh, uh, and the impact, on the national interest, we see that it touches every aspect of the state's function. So when I say state, uh, it's a country, it's a government. So it's it has different, uh, 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 like it, we talk uh, state instead of country when we talk about uh, um, uh, about public law. And here there is issues when when someone in the in in the United States they think I'm speaking about United States within the United States. No, it's actually I'm speaking about government. So the the, the state's function, uh, um, um, the state has different uh, functions. One of them, one of the main function is to keep the public interest or protect the public interest or, and, and including the national security. So from extremely secure communications to faster code breaking to better detection of aircraft or, and submarine, that's what quantum technology uh, uh, potentials for, the, for the, uh, the national security. So when we talk about the quantum technology application for the national interest, we speak about uh, or we try to understand uh, uh, what is the national interest exactly and why quantum is essential for nations. And why I speak about this, because if you remember what happened in the beginning of the year or a little bit before, some uh, researchers and, and, and uh, some from the, the ecosystem, from the quantum ecosystem, they were uh, called by the authority in the United States and uh, being uh, investigated for, uh, let's say, dealing with um, some um, other parties they are in uh, other countries and most likely in countries that they are not allies or partners with the United States. And this is very, very important. Like I said, if you are uh, uh, acting uh, in a way that you, there is any implication for the national interest, there's a long arm jurisdiction and long arm law, they can get you even though you were not uh, let's say you are acting in in a, in a, in a good intention, and you try to grow your business or uh, build an ecosystem. So this is very important. So when we talk about the national interest, the thing is like, what is it? So the national interest could be defined as anything. There is a lot of uh, um, definitions for the national interest, but it could be <coughs> defined as anything that is beneficial or good for a nation. Uh, or that gives it an advantage and competitive advantage because today what the nations doing are trying to compete against each other. There is economic competition, there's technological competition and so on. So uh, other than the military, which was the main uh, 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 competing ground for nations before. So, uh, however, it is important to mention a few points. A country's national interest is not, it's not static, so it's changing. Uh, uh, and and uh, um, so it changes over time and uh, it's adaptable based on the national prerogatives and international scene. Um, every country 
has its own national interest and all countries possess common interests. So there is two, two different ways. And here plays the diplomacy such. Uh, so uh, the, the, the specific national interest could be economic interest, security interest, uh, ideological interest. So when we talk about the, the, the essence, for example, of European Union, which is diplomacy, anything, uh, uh, sorry, which is, uh, um, uh, uh, let's say freedoms, and uh, uh, which is uh, well, human rights, and, and uh, those uh, kind of uh, uh, acquis communautaire, what we called it under the European Union law. So when it touches these uh, uh, factors, actually it touches the, 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 the interest of the union or of the countries itself. And uh, so ideology is very, very important. So those uh, are, are, are very important. So when we talk about the national interest commonly include self-preservation, primary duty of any government, and we have independence, which is the sovereignty of state, and we have economic well-being, which is very, very important, and we have the military security. So when it comes to the categories of national interest, I would refer to the Commission uh, on America's national interest in identifying uh, a hierarchy of America's national interest as an example. So we have different national interest levels. So we have the vital interest, we have the extremely important interest, we have the important interest, and we have the less important or secondary interest. In my opinion, I think that quantum technologies, uh, particularly quantum uh, um, computing uh, and, uh, and, uh, um, um, and uh, quantum uh, cryptography are very, very important and they are going to the top of the list. They are among the vital interests in the context of the national uh, security or the national interest in, in general. And there is a difference between national security and national interest. Actually, the national uh, interest scope is bigger. National security is one of them. So the governments are, uh, and private investors all around the world are pouring billions of dollars in quantum research and development. So we have uh, satellite-based quantum key distribution for encryption was put into action laying uh, the, the groundwork for a potential uh, quantum security-based global communication network. Uh, we have IBM, Google, Microsoft, Amazon, and other companies are investing heavily in developing large-scale quantum computing hardware and software. And we see um, the latest development, actually, it's like sometimes I cannot even keep track of about what is going on. So even so, so but I do, <laughs> even so, business leaders uh, should consider developing strategies to address uh, different um, areas. And here come the common international interest between the country and the diplomacy. So we, they should plan uh, for quantum security. They should plan for governance. They should identify use cases for quantum computing. They should think through responsible design. They should also uh, um, uh, think about the, the, uh, the property rights of the, 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 the private, uh, um, of innovators within the private sector. So by play, planning responsibly while also embracing future uncertainty, um, businesses can improve their odds of being ready for the quantum future. And this is very, very important for the private sector. But when I say that private sector, it's important, this is the same way of the space race, which is the other race that it is uh, uh, very important today. And, and this is what I say all the time. Actually, we have the, the space race was started uh, really earlier uh, uh, than the, this quantum race that we are seeing today. But whatever is going to happen is going to be based on the, the who has the, the 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 who has the next, let's say, capabilities that it will uh, um, um, like be a competitive advantage based on uh, like uh, comparing to the other uh, um, parties within the, the, the other states. So looking at the international scene, we have USA, China, Japan, Europe, and UK, and other, and, and other countries, they are, uh, uh, we see contrast in attitudes, um, cons uh, it, which consists of, of poles uh, of attraction uh, as government develop their industrial strategy uh, and, and um, national uh, uh, mercantilism characterized by state-sponsored uh, innovation, 
So uh, we have China made quantum communications uh, a national priority. So the last 15 years, uh, they, 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 they presented uh, uh, um, cutting edge scientific and technological capabilities. Uh, we have Japan also seems to be um, a country where the largest efforts from private enterprises is taking place. Um, when we, we see Europe, of course, the UK also is, is, uh, is, uh, is, is getting some competitive advantage. And when we look at uh, uh, Europe, we see a first class academic research in quantum communications, uh, which attracts many foreign students and researchers. And here also there is an issue because the United States try to reduce the, the, the students are coming from uh, um, um, outside of United States in order to get uh, um, their education in the US. Then after that, there is a, a problem with they go back to their countries. And this is a part of the national security or the national interest also. Uh, so when I go back to, uh, one very important uh, aspect of the, because I touched upon the, the space race and the space race is very, very important because of this, the, 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 the application of space technology for uh, our uh, needs as humans as, or uh, as nation. And here I will jump to the, the presentation that I keep this, but I will, I will speak from this presentation I got it for, um, the expert Neaton I mentioned about earlier. So uh, space is very, very important because of uh, its role in social development, economic growth, security and defense, sustainable development goals, and disaster management. So the state's re reliance or, or the country's reliance upon space-based capabilities during COVID-19 demonstrated the need for space, not only to manage the pandemic, but also space-based capabilities ensure continuity of its functions, security, justice, public order, and uh, public services in general. So here are the space, uh, I mean, the, 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 the functions of, of a government. So security, justice, public order, and public services in general. If you look at, and you are innovator, and you hear about this, and you can innovate and bring solution to the, to the, to the government, uh, about any aspects of this using quantum technology, you would get funding and you will get uh, uh, um, uh, like, uh, let's say uh, uh, possibilities in order to move forward. So also uh, uh, when, when we look at the, the, the international overview of the, of the two poles or, or the competing polls that it's happening right now in general, and I'm not speaking only about quantum. This is, this is the international scene in the international relation and diplomacy. We have two polls. And actually some people, they say, uh, there is, there is uh, uh, where is Russia in this? Because Russia, uh, Russia, Russia is with the poll of China, but who's pulling those, uh, uh, um, th th those threads right now, those strings, are the two poles, United States and China. So we have uh, um, an, uh, a scene right now. So driven by the Chinese American rivalry and global techno-political sphere of influence, a new paradigm has emerged. So here the quantum uh, uh, ecosystem goes under this uh, uh, issue. So the space domain is one of the most critical domains to protect the national interest as well as the global interest and imagine quantum technology use in the space domain and actually I know Rube very well even even sometimes I ask him for his opinion uh, to understand the implication in term of technology to this so uh, it, it's um, it's it's huge implication for this so we have great power competition we have the US China trade conflict is a political instrument bound with the new world order development. And actually when we speak about new world order, it's, it's the, 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 it starts with the economic order because who has the power economically will rule uh, uh, the world. And I'm sorry, this is international relation. I'm not here to applaud the, the, the idea and the way things how going, but this is the way. So the formation of two poles, like I said, we have the US and allies and partners poll uh, at one side and the other opposite side, we have China and its uh, partners and allies and, and Russia is with them. So with the COVID-19 pandemic, the world has witnessed an increase of protectionist measures 
uh, we have the US-China retaliations continue to impact the global scene. We have economic competition and trade war. We have technological rivalry and counter uh, capabilities endeavors. We have military race and security challenges. We have ideological influence because the problem is that the, the, the issues between the ideology in, in China that it could, and actually I am unbiased. I'm saying this based on, on, on writing and research and the way how I see things in practice. So the China-American competition created the US, uh, what, what the US president called extreme competition. So this is where uh, uh, innovators from uh, like uh, cross jurisdiction innovator, innovators who wants to, uh, to to grow their business, who wants to have investments, who wants to uh, build an ecosystem, they need to be aware about what's happening. So <clears throat> the protectionism on the rise, and this is this is a fact. So we have when it comes to uh, 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 strategic um, technologies that have implication for the national interest. We have export control, number one, and the other one is controlling the investment flows. So when we talk about the export control, we say protectionism has been increasing, especially after the various legislative reform taken pl place since the last few years in the US through export control. So uh, the latters were uh, designed through legislations, licensing and regulation to control technologies, goods and services with a dual use. So the dual use is military and, and civilian exports. As per uh, Rotenberg and um, Etli in their uh, paper, they say export controls, regulations, influence, business environment, and have a, a critical effect on trade, innovation, and industry competitiveness, and investment uh, uh, flow. This is very, very important also to take care of. And uh, uh, more than that, we have the other problem, which is the foreign, in foreign investment control. And this is done through other means and other laws, which they can uh, uh, um, be, let's say, sometimes uh, I find the land is, is, uh, is very, very um, like uh, the, the transition from this to that in when, when we do the due diligence is very, the line is very thin. So when we talk about the foreign investment control in, in, uh, uh, in general, we have countries uh, who, has, who have been increasing their protective measures to protect their national interest from the Chinese access to critical sectors, infrastructure, and technologies. Uh, more stringent measure, measures have been taken to put foreign investment under strict uh, scrutiny in order to inhibit China's economic prof proliferation through their private sectors. And here, when I talk like this, the investment, we will not see it obvious that the investment is coming from China. Actually, when we talk about SPACs, for example, the SPACs uh, uh, schemes, it's very difficult to go to the down layer and to check who is injecting the money. And sometimes when uh, this uh, 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 money flow is done, uh, there are rules and there are, uh, let's say reporting needs to be done in order for the competent authority to be aware and, and, and give the feedback if it's okay or not. So it's it, whatever some people they try to cover or, or, or they are not aware who is behind the money flow. It's, it's very important to have the due diligence for the people that they are receiving the investments for the recipient uh, in their country. And the control is coming from the export, from the country that, sorry, from uh, uh, the, 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 the inward uh, uh, investment uh, country and from the other country that it is, uh, uh, let's say the, the, the home state, we call it. So very, very important. So in the, the 2018 US Foreign Investment Risk Review Modernization Act, which we called it FIRMA, um, implemented on February 13, 2020, came into force to reform the National Security Review, reviews conducted by the Committee of Foreign Investment in the US, which is called CFIUS. So the US measures rippled around the, the other jurisdictions and, increase, uh, and increased during the health crisis during COVID-19. So European Union, the same, and has equally adopted in March 2019, 
new regulation, uh, um, which is the regulation EU uh, 2019 slash 452, which implemented a screening frame framework to put under the member state scrutiny, the inward FDI <coughs> from the non-EU member state uh, that may affect public order or security. Uh, in response to the crisis COVID-19 pandemic, the European Commission has issued on 25th of March, 2020, a set of guidelines to protect uh, critical EU assets and technology in current crisis. So here I will recall uh, the EU Commission President, um, and I quote, uh, um, she, she said, if we want Europe to emerge from this crisis as strong as we entered it, then we must take precautionary measures now. As uh, in crisis, when our industrial and corporate assets can be under stress, we need to protect our security and economic sovereignty we have the tools to deal with this situation under European and national law. And I want to urge member states to make full use of them. The EU is and will remain an open market for foreign direct investment, but this openness is not unconditional. So uh, as the aim of the guidelines here, I, I, uh, the, the quotation mark um, is uh, like the, the quote is, is done. So. Here, I would say, as the aim of the guidelines is to safeguard the EU critical assets and companies in sensitive and strategic sectors in a time of economic vulnerability and public health crisis, commercial space activities with the union would be among and are among the activities to undergo restrictive measures due to the strategic use of space. So this is the situation that, that foreign investment control are underway. There is a big case, which is always the case study of, um, I say always, Huawei. This is the, the, the way how we say it in Arabic. But actually, I know the pronunciation is different in, uh, um, uh, like, uh, um, in other, for, uh, for, for uh, uh, native speakers. So uh, um, we call it always that, uh, there is a problem with telecommunication uh, companies and, and uh, also, of course, uh, uh, companies that they are working in, in uh, um, communication in general, and of course, including quantum, uh, uh, like uh, companies working uh, in this field, um, using quantum uh, or trying to use quantum technology is very important to uh, to understand that there is an issue uh, for the foreign investment control that they can be uh, uh, under scrutiny within this field. So space company turn away from uh, away the foreign investment and the business opportunities and possibilities of scaling up. So many companies they 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 did turn away uh, their uh, their investments. So based on the industry players uh, experience, space startups avoided triggering CFIUS, which is the American, uh, um, uh, I, I referred to, um, under the American legal system, uh, controlling the foreign investments. Uh, so um, since then, uh, the interim, uh, since the interim regulation announcement in 2018, even before it comes into uh, uh, action, uh, there's a lot of problems with uh, with companies within the space sector turned away um, the, the the inward FTIs. So as per Bryce Space and Technologies report 2020, cited the Leo satellite constellations data storage startup called Cloud Constellation for uh, turning down an investment of 100 million US dollars from the Hong Kong based corporation HCH Group for the same reason. So. This is what 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 is very important and uh, to be uh, to be aware of. This is what I do in uh, like when I uh, advise some um, companies or investors, most likely that they are want to they want to invest in some uh, quantum uh, uh, technology or they have some uh, export of quant of uh, let's say uh, export of technologies in general. So uh, I help them to do the due diligence in order to uh, be aware about the situation. Um, so if I go back to the quantum um, uh, and, and the quantum um, specific situation right now, 
So we see that that uh, uh, there is crucial. Uh, it's crucial to mention that the space ecosystem has been witnessing when this is what I said: the, the increased race related to quantum technologies as quantum encryption, uh, uh, which present the anticipated solution to a massive security issue with the regards to space residents. Uh, space residents are the satellites or a space station. So uh, since it is known that the race will offer a competitive advantage to prevent hackers from espionage and other threats, in addition to quantum computing capabilities to uh, enable military tactics uh, with greater accuracy. Uh, so this is why uh, uh, the, 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 the and, and let's not forget the successful launch of Chinese um, Messias uh, satellite in 2016, which is the first quantum satellite in space, and how this satellite set up the first uh, intercontinental encryption service using quantum uh, crypto uh, uh, quantum crypto cryptology. So it's 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 very very important uh, um, to to stress that. And how can we move from? So I talked about restriction uh, restriction and export control and access to investment. So here, the recommendation and way forward. Actually, there's a, lot, a problem of, uh, of uh, predictability. So if I want to say, how is the way further, uh, further and what are the opportunities and challenges, the challenges are there. So other than just innovation uh, challenges, we have other uh, challenges, which they are related to, um, to, to the, the, the issues that investors and, and innovators are going through. Uh, we, have, we have opportunities and the opportunities of quantum technology within the space uh, um, ecosystem is huge because uh, actually the, 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 the scope of space economy is, is big. And uh, it can it can touch any of the, uh, the the streams because we have different stream the the upstream we have the downstream and we have the space der uh, uh, derived activities in other sectors that it can be uh, uh, um, uh, like quantum technology can solve these issues. So with the competition in space, we have international overview which I touched upon earlier. So we have the U.S. Space Force, Russia uh, resurgence. We have China space sovereignty and quantum, uh, um, uh, let's say, advance. We have the Japanese rising in space. We have the Indian expanding power in space and quantum. We have the Re European of power in space exploration and, and going further with the, with the uh, um, academic uh, finding. We have Africa becoming a space continent. And we have the Middle East and Africa is, uh, and North Africa, they are uh, also in, in, in between. So I think I will wrap up with something uh, which is the recommendation. And, uh, and, and actually, first of all, I will speak about the main challenges that can be, uh, um, uh, they can be faced by quantum uh, uh, technologists who wants to enter into the space industry is sustainability issues. Uh, actually, we are suffering with space debris issues, and this one, hopefully, it will be sorted out before we contaminate totally uh, the, 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 actually, the Earth orbits. Uh, we have international space law legal gaps and national laws competitive trends. We have space uh, had, uh, became a war fighting domain. And this is was said by uh, um, governmental representatives so many times. We have national security and intelligence and, uh, issues. We have cybersecurity issues, data encryption and cryptography. We have geospatial intelligence issues. We have international security and peace uh, uh, problems. And we have defense and military activities. And if you can sort out and, and bring about solution to these, you are uh, like you made it up <laughs> across the sector. So my conclusion is the legal and institutional reform to govern new space activities and also the quantum uh, um, uh, technologies emphasizing long-term sustainability, intra and intergenerational equity, ethics and uh, stewardships idea are very, very important. <coughs> we need to build uh, a military uh, coalition in space and this one is based on diplomacy and, uh, and uh, uh, complementary uh, uh, interests uh, and not start a war over there. We, have, uh, we need to establish a global regulatory committee with more power for both uh, uh, um, uh, sectors or both ecosystems or the interconnection uh, between both. 
And uh, John, I'm sorry, I see you're sleepy. I'm almost done. <laughs> <laughs> and we have we have also um, uh, um, we need to uh, also start shaping a strategic geopolitical environment in space. Uh, we need also to integrate military space power with national and international operations. Uh, we need to provide space support in space for national and international operations. Uh, there is uh, um, uh, also um, a need to to reform space. Uh, 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 like and military uh, reforms. Um, we need to have new military uh, space uh, uh, roadmaps and uh, we need to build emergency response divisions to military uh, space threats. And like I said, you will, you will come up with any of the innovation of these things and create a solution you are in for big funding. I'm not, I'm, I'm not promising anyone, but this is based on uh, the, the strategies, uh, the way how uh, things are going with, the, with, the inter with national and international uh, roadmaps. And, uh, and this is it. <coughs> so I hope I did not take too much time. Oh, that was great. That was great. Uh, thank you, Mara. That was that was great, and I think, as with so many of these things, um, in the words of well, depending who you prefer, Voltaire or Spider Man, um, <laughs> with these things, um, you know, with, with great power comes great responsibility, and um, it's been it's been quite a big week in the UK for quantum events, and um, one of the things I've asked a couple of times that maybe hasn't had the, the, quite the, an, an answer to the question, but has, has brought up interesting themes nonetheless, is that, <clears throat> so we're working, <clears throat> excuse me, we're working in, a, in an environment where there are, um, th th there's a real drive for um, open, collaborative, equitable technology, but the, the potential it offers um, is obviously something that both organisations and national interests or national um, countries take a, a strong interest in. So how do you see the interplay between these two differing uh, or, or potentially differing factions, you know, the, the making it equitable, sharing it, or, or looking at the sort of quantum nationalism or company IPs? How do you think these two themes will, will sort of interplay with each other? Um. Yes, uh, John, I, I lost you in certain areas because actually I was coughing and I hear you <laughs> coughing also. I hope that it's not, I'm not contaminating everyone on <laughs> the internet. <laughs> Computer virus. <laughs> so, uh, uh, yeah, uh, are you talking about, about the, 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 the uh, interplay between the, the national interest and, and the individual interest? Is that the way? So, uh, so, so we, we kind of, as, as an ecosystem, I think both quantum and space, there's a, a lot of people that want to create um, an equitable, collaborative um, ecosystem to, to work for the, for the sort of greater good and scientific ex excellence and what that can bring. But then you have um, nations and companies that want to focus on how they can benefit themselves by having that advantage. And I'm wondering how you see these two differing ideas interplay. Capitalism. <laughs> <laughs> Capitalism. Actually, uh, uh, how I see that um, uh, at the end of the day, uh, there, is, there, there are things that freedom of establishment, uh, freedom to do business, um, there are uh, like among the, 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 the freedoms that, that it is uh, granted by most of the, the constitutions in the world. So very, very important to know that. But the problem, there are always restrictions on these freedoms. So I'm gonna answer your question on two ways. So we have, we have the interplay between the national interest or the, 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 um, the countries or, or, or the state's interest. And we have the interest, the individual interest and his IPs and everything. Uh, 
but and he has the freedom to do business and the freedom to to uh, to own his ip and do what he wants with the ip but the freedom uh, actually there are uh, prerogatives to that there are restrictions to that and this is these restrictions when we go to every constitution of uh, uh, let's say a free country uh, we will find always a freedom and we have um, a, a prerogative or we have restriction to the freedom and always i i remind um uh, because actually i i when when i teach public law i say something to, uh, to this example to, to to the students actually what i tell them uh, look at this you are in your house and you have you are free in your house and actually uh, uh, you have loud music and your music uh, you are free to play your music until that music become a, 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 a problem to your neighbors. So when it comes problem to your neighbor, in, neighbor, you are exercising your your freedom or your own, uh, uh, let's say, uh, uh, um, let's say, uh, right that is granted by 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 the constitution and the law because the constitution is the matrix of all the laws within the country. And if the law is contradictory to the constitution, it is unconstitutional. And and there are always recourses to say that this law is unconstitutional and it will be put aside or taken down so the thing is like uh, it's the same thing for uh, uh, for for your for for uh, technologies and your ip so when you have your ip and your ip uh, is is touching upon national interest as i say right now and you want to export your ip to another countries and actually that ip uh, that, that technology that you want to export to another countries and and uh, it it will it will be a competitive it will be disadvantage to your to your uh, country so it enters enter the national interest and uh, uh, um, or or when we talk about the du dual use of technology you can be civilian or military actually when you transfer that technology to another country you are given the same power to another country and here the, you're like no 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 actually there is a restriction in this and you can you need to stop so how i see that i see that it's legitimate i see that the country has the right to do that because under under the the, the social uh, contract we abide by the constitution and uh, we abide about about what we agreed upon and 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 so on for the uh, um, like restrictions to the freedoms the other thing is is how to reconciliate the other two interests or uh, the goodwill of the scientific community that they want to build an ecosystem to help and to have equitable share to everyone from a goodwill. And the other one is the private sector that they are moving by arrow eyes. And, and, and these are, I don't see that they are competing interests. I see that they are complementary. And, and this is the way how, uh, of course, of course, uh, uh, complementary to certain point, because actually if uh, uh, the, 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 the company that doing uh, like is, is, uh, is working uh, to make uh, money and to ha to maximize its, its its ROI, it cannot give its uh, uh, IPs or business secrets or so on for uh, open to everyone else because that's how it's it's within let's say raison d'être of a company is to make to make business and to make profits. So there are two things, and here I say, how can we uh, bring? those two together and here what I, I, I always talk about and, and advocate I advocate for the social responsibility of, of, uh, of uh, a private actor into filling a gap into having uh, uh, let's say social justice into helping the, the community they are in and so on. So this is coming into something it's uh, in the core of the values of the company itself how it, it, it have, let's say, allocate certain ROI to initiatives for the scientific community to help, because actually I know geniuses and I know people that they have very, very good patents. And the problem is like those patents are laid aside, and I'm talking about space industry more than, than quantum, they are put aside 
in a way that 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 they don't they don't commercialize because a, a, a scientist a, a, like is he's a scientist is not there to commercialize need to give this to the business people in order to commercialize and 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 uh, and accumulate and this is what i say uh, uh, and and this is one of the line in in my uh, white paper uh, that I made for Vernwell. It's it's the, what is most, most important is uh, in, in uh, like inventions is like, sorry about this scientists, okay, but what I say invention happens, but innovation is genius. So what is more genius is the innovation out of the invention that you have. And here comes bringing people together, the scientific community, the business people, the people with goodwill, in order to have an ecosystem to build and to have, uh, uh, let's say, a, a fair share to countries that they don't have opportunities to, uh, to, to, to own or to enjoy the advancement of the quantum technology or any other technology, what I say. Uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, um, yeah, when we talk about race and when we talk about national interest, at the end of the day, we are blocked by one thing. It's like there are restrictions, and we need to uh, uh, mind those restrictions because actually there are issues that it can be uh, uh, happening if your goodwill is taken you into a way where you are uh, given some information or you are collaborating with one of the institute that it is outside, which is managed and and uh, and uh, uh, funded by, for example, and, and I'm, I'm, I am so unbiased, I don't have anything about China and I'm not for United States, but this is diplomacy, this is a thing and I am unbiased. So when, 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 when you find that uh, when you are in a goodwill acting for uh, 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 scientific research that is funded by uh, any parties that it has implication uh, or, or it's, uh, it's, uh, it has a tie to uh, any of those countries that they are banned from, uh, 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 from dealing with, there is a problem and, and you need to be aware. So this is why, like I said again, and I highlight uh, due diligence is very, very important. As, as due diligence for a contract, when I do contract, it's like I, I, I study if there is a foreign element, it's very important to see what are the implication of that four element uh, elements uh, when it comes to the applicable law that it can be applied even though you chose a law in your contract. So this is similar. And thank you that I've asked that question several times, and that's the first time anyone's actually answered the question that I've asked. So <laughs> much, much appreciated. Um, and I'd like to, to to open out to the audience a little bit. So um, Rupesh, I noticed you had um, a question quite early on. So if, if you'd like to, if you'd like to come and join us, Rupes. Yeah. Hi everyone. Hi Malek. It's a great talk. Um, I've got a deceptively simple question because the more I think about it the more steam comes out of my ears which is how do you define borders in space I mean it's easy on the earth you have land sea and air but when you have a say a privately owned space station you know from a company how does it all work okay yeah this is the the, the, the let's say a, a, a very good question thank you Rupesh. but you can all open the the camera and we can we can we can interact if 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 it's possible for you john and we still have time so it's nice to have you know interactive uh, session and and i'm not the only one who talks uh, so i will answer your question uh, and 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 later on i will ask you a question Rupesh, because always i do that to you uh, uh, so I, i'll let you think with the introduction that i made to say that with with the quantum race one and uh, a revolution uh, the first one and the second one is there anything that you wanted to add because i'm like i said i'm not the the the, the one that who is expert in quantum but i can help all of you legal wise and 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 uh, and and business also uh, uh, within my capacity uh, so when we talk about the the uh, first of all you touch upon very very important question which is uh, 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 let's say within the heart of international space law so borders in space no, space is open common. It's uh, space is open for everyone. No one owns, let's say, uh, there's no, let's say, and another way I rephrase, there is no jurisdiction of any country in space. 
So jurisdiction means a sovereignty, a sovereign uh, power of a state in space. All of them are equal. Okay, and there is a lot of uh, um, issues. Uh, uh, so space, uh, everyone has the freedom to to uh, um, space exploration. Everyone uh, has the freedom of uh, of uh, uh, scientific research. Um, space is not owned by anyone, and we don't have jurisdictional, uh, uh, let's say, uh, uh, power of any space on that. Now, space station, it is governed by. Uh, um, um, intergovernmental agreement and they have it is governed by intergovernmental agreement It's like contract we have me and you but but it is uh, uh, um, under international pub, uh, public law it has its uh, its uh, uh, terms and it has its articles and the way how it does even though even the international uh, agreement of the uh, governing the space station there are some issues uh, um, uh, happening uh, and and one of them uh, issues is the one crime happened in uh, the International Space Station, which was like a couple, uh, one of them used, I think, I think the credit card of, of, of another one without it, uh, her uh, permission. I think so. But when we talk about space law, and this is what I say all the time, there are different, uh, let's say, uh, branches. Uh, and it's not about, uh, about, it's not one practice. Actually, I am in the commercial side of it. So some people, they are in the military uh, um, uh, uh, side. Some other, they are in the cybersecurity. Some other are in the IP rights. Uh, so I touch upon some of these, but uh, um, uh, it's like uh, uh, um, uh, the military uh, use. I'm not specialized in that. Uh, I, I took my way and most likely I am, uh, um, because I practice international business law. So I need to uh, uh, know very well the space law and I need to know the governance within the space uh, uh, realm. Uh, so what is important are the main uh, um, principles in space, which are freedom of uh, use, of exploration. Uh, space is, uh, is uh, the economy in space is very, very weird. And this is what I say to people is based on because some they, they don't know that it's based on uh, something is called uh, come first uh, uh, who comes first uh, 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 first served so we have we have also the 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 orbital the orbits and with the placement of the satellites uh, who comes first who 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 registered the satellite first and get allocation of the uh, of of the of, uh, the the, the of this um, spot or slot, we call it S L O T. Uh, get it, uh, and and here there's a problem because actually what they do also private actors, they they they. This is one of the voids that we have today. They registered and we call it paper satellite. They register the satellite and they don't deploy it and they try to give it away or sell it later on. So like that, they have the uh, the thing. So when we talk about uh, 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 who own what. Uh, or, or borders, there is no border. Space is open for everyone, but uh, uh, there is there is a, a, um, a restriction when it comes to the restriction of ownership uh, of, uh, so uh, uh, governments or countries uh, cannot own or have sovereignty on any of those, uh, uh, any, 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 any way uh, or anywhere in space. <coughs> but, there is something happened because there is a legal void or, or the space treaties are known to be uh, uh, vague and there is a lack of, of definitions because actually in, in treaties and in law, we always rely upon very important things. They are the definition in order to see the scope of what we are talking about. And there is the game, okay? So there are problem of, of definitions. For example, one of the definition is, uh, uh, is the delimitation of the of the, um, the, uh, the the realm or domains between uh, the space like outer space where outer space starts and the other one is the 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 uh, the, the, the space which is uh, uh, the, the applicable uh, international uh, uh, law of um, the 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 air 
uh, law. So they are, which is governing uh, all the activities like airplanes and things like that. So we have a problem in the treaties. There's no delimitation. They did not say when outer space uh, starts because each set of uh, 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 laws or, or set of rules, they are different. The liability is much different. The, 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 the treatment of public actors is different. The control of the, the traffic control, there is a traffic control for airplanes, for example, and there's a, a problem in the international level when it comes <coughs> to suborbital and when it comes to, uh, uh, to, to, to uh, um, rocket or space uh, crafts. So uh, uh, it's, it's, it's important to, to understand that there is a, a, a debate uh, related to the delimitation between the two uh, domains. And some people, they say there is a customary uh, rule right now because we got used that the Carmen line and the Carmen line is, is specific. And uh, uh, they say it's, uh, it's at the Carmen line, it starts this outer space. But the problem is it did not come yet as, uh, 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 it's not yet recognized as customary law. Customary law means like we all agree that it is like that and we need to be abide about. Because actually we have, we have some countries, they have their own rules and they say their sovereignty goes up to the geostationary uh, uh, orbit, uh, which are uh, under the Boget, Bogota, Bogota Convention. Uh, so, so it's different. They went out of the thing and actually they integrated this rule within their uh, constitutions. So uh, can you imagine that they say our, our jurisdiction is up to the, the, the geostationary orbit means like, uh, how about the, 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 the satellites in LEO? How about, how, how about all this? And, and uh, those are uh, 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 country, they caused the a debate because they found a problem within uh, uh, the, the, the void or the gaps within the space uh, uh, treaties. So, there is no borders and uh, space is open for everyone. The economic system is open, uh, a system that uh, uh, who comes first comes serve. Uh, it will create issues later on in term of uh, uh, like uh, deployment of uh, more space stations, for example, and deployment of, uh, of uh, let's say start of building uh, uh, which is we have uh, we have uh, different programs right now done by different countries building those infrastructures on the moon and cis lunars. Uh, uh, so the thing is like who comes first comes serve, but how long and how long we will not have a war because there's an issue. So we have the Artemis program is led by United States and uh, and so many countries they are enter into agreement to 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 be part of the Artemis program. And uh, you have China also is is, uh, is has signed, I believe, with uh, with Russia into uh, some uh, endeavors on the moon. So this is the problem. Now, when we come to the private actors in space, there is a, a, a thing. It's very important to know. Uh, actually, the private actors are authorized and licensed by their countries. So uh, uh, either the country uh, of the nationality or the country where the 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 the, the uh, let's say the activities belong to. So uh, and everything happen in in to, when it comes to outer space vis-a-vis uh, uh, -vis other countries. The the the, the state that it authorizes uh, or it uh, it licenses uh, is. Uh, responsible uh, uh, and liable under international law for any acts is done by those uh, 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 parties. One more thing is uh, you have before they we, we said in the international treaties it was uh, uh, and and four of, the, of them uh, before the latest one which is the moon agreement so the four first ones uh, they they did not insist that private parties also cannot own uh, uh, um, I cannot have uh, uh, any uh, property right in, in, in space. But the, the last one did, and uh, we called it the fail, uh, the failed agreement because actually only 18 parties, I believe they signed it out of 90 something for the Outer Space Treaty, which we call it the Magna Carta of Space Law. 
So there are a lot of issues and there are issues of sustainability of, uh, of, of things that is going on. You see, if you go uh, life tracking, all these uh, 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 satellite and space debris around, there's issues. And the other issues that is going to be race uh, uh, is going to be a, a problem, huge issue is the cross-contamination between there and here and vice versa. So this is another thing that it's not, we have guidelines, we have soft laws and soft laws, they're not binding and there's no mechanism that to, to, to sort out these problems. So I, I think we need to have another thing, John, because another uh, uh, session to speak about space law uh, in terms of, uh, uh, let's say, quantum technologists who wants to, uh, uh, to do uh, uh, or, or act uh, or, or, or be around these activities within the space because actually uh, uh, space communications and deployment of quantum technology is very, very important. Uh, and, and this is where there is the, the opportunities. And this is where it's not, let's say, it's, it's not, we'll see there is a problem. And, and I talked with uh, Sunali. Uh, she's working on, on quantum uh, um, Q, uh, QKD. She's working on QKD with her uh, company. And she's telling me, actually, right now, they are selling the solution. Actually, they are, they are, they are scaled up already and in, within short time. So uh, this is what I try to do. I, even though I'm not quantum technologist, I try to support the, 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 the ecosystem and the people that are around and, and, and see further and strategically uh, uh, try to uh, um, encourage how to enter into these uh, 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 domains. And I think, uh, yeah, first, first of all, yeah, of course we can, uh, we can have another, um, dis <coughs> excuse me, we can have another um, discussion around that. And I think there's, that th there's so much that's with these talks that one thing leads on to another. But whilst you were talking, actually, you mentioned the sort of the definition and, and you know, kind of my, my understanding is that is the, the, the definition of specific words, what that means, how that's, um, how that's acted upon. Um, I was also wondering as well with things like the burden of proof. So, for example, in the UK with civil law, it's on the balance of probabilities with criminal law. Um, or sorry, with murder, for example, it's beyond virtual certainty. And um, I, I, I don't know how well these translate, but there, there may be. So you mentioned the, um, for example, having... Uh, um, you know, laying claim on a certain area when it comes to satellites, but in due course, there's there's a lot of talk about mining for minerals, whether it's on you know the moon, different planets, comets, whatever it may be, and and I'm wondering what the potential is there to go from you know where where it may be a civil matter in um, in terms of sort of trespass, but then if it's mining, does it become theft and how balance of probabilities come into play and the, the sort of complex nature of that, how, what, what mechanism, rather than getting the nitty gritty of that, but kind of what mechanisms may be able to be put in place, what harnesses could be implemented um, before that happens to make sure there's a, um, a mechanism to deal with these things. And, and if that's indeed something that is under discussion. Actually, it comes to the uh, uh, national laws. Like I said, you have two layers in every legal system. You have the international law mm. and you have the national law. For now, uh, when we talk about international law, is the, the law that it governs uh, public uh, legal persons uh, or, or uh, um, uh, and, uh, uh, like states or any public, uh, 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 international public law uh, persons. So you have uh, international NGOs and so on. So, and, and, and we have the private international uh, uh, law, which is um, uh, uh, governing uh, uh, the private actors uh, act when it comes to cross border uh, um, uh, uh, transaction or uh, cross jurisdictional issues. So, when we talk about, about uh, space law, we have two layers. The first layer is the national laws and the other one is international law. This space is international by nature, it's open for everyone. That's what I said earlier. So, and you have the, 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 the 
countries, there are uh, most of the countries, they, they, most of them, uh, most of the, the, the country within the international legal system, they sign the outer space treaties. So, and they are abide uh, by following the main, I mean, all the, 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 the articles of the outer space treaties with a treaty, which is called the Magna Carta. So it, it laid down uh, the responsibility and the liability of states, and it laid down that uh, uh, a country need to govern uh, its space activities within its jurisdiction. So what happened? Uh, uh, what, what happened is uh, very important that the, the country goes by and govern uh, or or set the rules and the laws to. Uh, uh, like, for example, through authorization before given the authoriz authorization of uh, space activities, which fallen under the scope of the space uh, national space law, there are a, a big list to be uh, to be done. So when there's a launch uh, uh, activity, most of the countries, they have a separate license for that sep separate authorization for that. And one of them is third party liability insurance. Uh, some of them is abiding by the, uh, the by by the environmental law. The other ones are uh, different ones. And, and when it comes now for criminal action that it is done in space, okay, we need to go by each legal system to check the national law of this, uh, the space law, what it is saying in order to go back and see if it's uh, 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 ruled or if, if it, there is specific rules or not. Anyway, there's another problem that you, uh, like you highlighted very important problem, which is uh, like, for example, trespassing and, and uh, uh, IPs and whatever, when it comes to different people from different countries mm -hmm. and here the issue is gonna happen. And the other problem that it's not, I did not see it yet is um, I'm, I'm not sure. I need to go back and check one more time. Uh, United States space law, but but there is one problem: is what if the action is done through robotics? What is the robots are creating issues over there? Who's going to be liable? Now there is important thing, and 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 uh, it it goes under the the act space activities in general because actually they but how we're going to uh, uh, literally go and and uh, add specific rules when it comes to uh, uh, robots, real robots. And, and how about if the robots are uh, become sentient uh, or, or, and they are in space? What's going to happen? How about if the robots, uh, uh, like, uh, I'm, I'm not too, too, I'm, I'm, I'm not so much into science fiction, but so far all science fiction is coming to, uh, um, to to uh, to happening so so many things are are there and and when when I speak about space law uh, really we need to come back and have a very nice uh, uh, let's say uh, presentation with explanation with the main uh, uh, principles with the uh, restrictions to the principle because always we have freedom and we have always restrictions to the freedom and how each problems was solved and what we have to be solved. I will, I will uh, uh, finish by saying something uh, uh, that people, they do not know the problem related to the space, uh, uh, to the satellites and the debris right now uh, and, and where we are heading. It's very important and it's very, very alarming because actually we have a system under United Nation to, uh, uh, to, to put down or to, um, let's say, uh, um, like uh, make, uh, register all space assets that it is deployed, uh, whether it's uh, it's um, a satellite or it's uh, what you call it, or it's a spacecraft. Uh, but there is a problem. There is discrepancy between uh, between different countries how they are inputting or they they are making the notification for registration to the United Nation. And the other thing is that there is a lag of time. So when they look at the register, there is not up to date. Never up to date. So this is another issue. We have debris over there, and every time we deploy, there are some some uh, 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 released uh, space debris, and we have also the issues that related to uh, Kessler syndrome, and it's the phenomenon when 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 uh, uh, related to space debris with the the the, the uh, uh, like how tense it is when it's orbiting, and at every collision. The, the the there's more debris and the, it it becomes faster uh, that it is orbiting and the chains of 
get in another collision is even bigger. <laughs> so I think I think if, if anything, there's probably more questions than answers from that, um, which which I think is a healthy position to be in. And, and certainly I think in terms of having um, you know more conversations, both as entangled discussions or from the president of One Quantum UK to the president of uh, One Quantum UAE as well, that, that could be another um, vehicle to um, to promote these conversations. So um, so um, um, really the, the, the overriding um, sentiment here is thank you so much for, for your time and um, and all this all this wonderful um, information and thought provoking information. So um, next week um, we return hot on the heels where all of this month's incredible guests uh, return to boldly go where no other talks can truly where no other talks truly can um, an entangled discussion. So, um, we've also got some festive surprises coming up in December. Um, so for that and details of all future talks, please follow Entangled Discussions on um, LinkedIn. And um, finally, um, thank you once again, Malak. It was, it was a fantastic talk and, and look forward to um, having you back next week. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. It was uh, a pleasure and it's always a pleasure. I hope that. But one, one more thing I want to ask Rupesh, he wanted to add anything to the to the to the to the first uh, 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 to the first introduction that I made. I would like to know. And, and if there is any correction that you would like to make, please feel free like that. I have, uh, let's say, you know, uh, what is that 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 uh, uh, thing uh, who who will win the million or or something like that and you always have call uh, uh call uh, uh, someone uh, to, a to help yeah, call a friend, friend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who wants to be a millionaire yes yeah. I remember that. That's it. yeah 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 well in the, in the quantum computing front you know being a millionaire having a million uh fantastic qubits is going to it's going to be a massive game changer if we ever get there of course um, so, yeah, no, the only thing I would add, really, uh, Malik, is, is just some exciting developments that have been uh, uh, announced recently, one from IBM, as you know. So we've broken through the 100 qubit barrier. So they have the 127 qubit Eagle system. And it's, it's less for me about uh, the 100 qubit barrier, but it's more about uh, the engineering and the packaging the ability to scale for the future, I think is, is going to be really exciting. And, and I can't wait to see how well that processor performs in real life. And then you have a different, completely different system. So you have neutral atoms, which we know from Coquanta, uh, Atom Computing, Pascal, and there's a kind of a new kid on the block. They're not really a new kid. I mean, they're from Harvard, but it's a new company called QERA and they've already built a 256 qubit device. And of course, there, there's a lot of discussion going on on the internet as to whether it's a real quantum computer or not. Is it a quantum simulator versus, versus all these things? But things are moving really fast and it's really exciting. So, the, the, so you know, uh, if we can start applying these new devices to use cases for space, sooner rather than later that's that's going to be important thank you thank you so much thank you Rupesh. yeah that's it's it's exciting time but also um uh, uh, i remember there was something happened and uh, and uh, some announcement was made then they 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 said they they it was a problem with the calculation anyway this was theoretical issue that was uh, happening and that's why always uh, um, some people they are very not say uh, let's say um, uh, not hundred percent sure about the, the 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 hype and the announcement. But of course we uh, uh, we can we can uh, rely upon the information that is given by uh, tech giants like uh, 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 like the ones you just cited. All right, thank you so much. Thank you, John, and uh, see you soon. Thank you, Rupesh. Thank you, Christopher, and thank you, Andrea. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thanks. Thank you. See you next week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.